This is collaborative code with NX and Next.js. My name is Brandon Roberts. You can find me on Twitter at Brandon T. Roberts, where I, I tweet out funny GIFs. I talk about sports and just have fun in general there. I work as an architect at Narwhal. I'm also a Google developer expert and a maintainer on the NGRX project. As I mentioned before, I work at Narwhal where we help teams build large applications using monorepos and proven development practices. So if you have a large project and you need help, take a look at our services page to get more details about how we can work together. So for the agenda for this talk, I'll talk about what NX is and I'll talk about how I can use NX to collaborate across applications and teams within a monorepo using Next.js. So what is NX? NX is an open source suite of build tools. It provides a CLI that's published on NPM. It also has a feature called computation caching, which I'll get into further into this talk. And it integrates with modern, the modern tooling that you're used to. And it has many more features, but these are just a few that I've named so far. When I mention modern tooling, uh, this includes uh, things like using TypeScript or and it has support for vanilla JavaScript if you rather take that approach. Using Storybook for integration with design systems. Uh, Jest for running unit integration tests. Cypress for running end-to-end -end tests. And EL ESLint for code quality checks. So how do NX and Next.js work together? So NX has an officially maintained plugin for Next.js by our core team. It's provided through the at Norol slash Next package on NPM, and it offers scaffolding for applications, components, libraries, and many other things. It also has support for building your application, serving it so you can watch uh, the site reload as you make changes, or exporting your Next.js app for production use. So how does NX help you collaborate with others in your code base? It does this in a few primary ways, and it does this by allowing you to do a few things very easily, or pretty straightforward. And those things are to be able to generate, to be able to reuse, and to be able to rerun tasks or not rerun tasks. Let's take a look at the command to create a new NX workspace with a Next.js app using the preset. We run this command, follow the prompts, and pick an application name. I'm going to use dashboard just for this example. Once I use the CLI to serve the app, uh, this is what I would see in the, in the browser for the dashboard application. NX also has visualization tools that let you see the dependencies amongst applications and libraries. Since we just started with the dashboard app, you can see we have a single app named dashboard in the workspace. Now we can generate other pages for the dashboard application, such as the home page. We can take this a step further and generate libraries that are shared across your workspace using the NX CLI. Here I'm using the generate command to generate a library of shared components. Generating components is straightforward also. You can generate a footer component inside the shared components library that can be used across multiple applications. So after using the footer in the dashboard application, we can use generate an updated dependency graph that shows in the browser what the dependencies are for the applications and libraries. As another example, NX also has first class support for vanilla React applications. So you can generate multiple React and Next.js apps alongside each other within your workspace. So now let's say you use, reuse the footer in both applications. Now by generating an updated dependency graph, you can see the relationships between the two apps. 
both of them depend on the shared components and we were able to quickly generate that library and reuse it across those two applications. As I mentioned, NX comes with many commands you can use, but there are a few main ones that you'll use out of the box. Such as generate, which we already talked about. Uh, the serve command where you can serve up your application and see it in the browser. You can build your uh, application you know, locally for deployment or even for production deployment. You can test your application and you can also run uh, visualize your applications and libraries within your workspace using the dependency graph command. The last one is the affected command and this command lets you know which projects were impacted by a given change. So looking at the dependency graph again, if you make a change to the blog application and generate the dependency graph using that, it shows it highlighted in red as affected. This is useful for only rerunning, also useful for only rerunning tasks for the affected projects, such as if you want to run the test for those, or if you want, you know that you've made changes and you want to redeploy an application or the applications that have changed. If we were to change the shared components library, both the dashboard and the blog applications are affected which is different than just the blog being affected on its own. And this is also visualized in the dependency graph. So as your workspace grows larger, you can use the affected commands to rerun tasks against changes to only certain parts that are in your monorepo. And there are other applications and libraries that won't be impacted by those changes, so you won't have to rerun those tests. I mentioned before that NX also has computation caching. And what that means is NX captures what input you use to run a given task and the output that was produced. So when you run a task based on a set of changes, the inputs and outputs are captured. Here I'm running unit tests for the blog application. But if I go back and run this same command twice with no changes, the second time or subsequent times I get the cached output. So even though I ran that same command again, I don't, I don't have to pay the penalty of executing the actual computation because computation, the output from the computation is cached and returned to you instantly. And this happen, all happens locally on your machine. So if you've run all your tests in your mono repo locally and you only and you run them all again, you're going to get the cached output. So you can run this locally and then you can actually scale this up across your team and your organization within with a few straightforward steps using NX Cloud, which takes that local computation caching and pushes it up to the cloud so that other people can take advantage of that computation that has already been run. So to recap, NX is an open source build tool that is extensible through plugins and it also gives you tools to promote an environment of collaboration and sharing between applications and libraries using those main areas I talked about. Being able to generate, being able to reuse, and being able to rerun or not rerun certain tasks. Thank you.